common ion effect on pH. Uh, sometimes we have to uh, calculate uh, situations where we have mixtures of different chemicals and in one situation uh, with a common ion effect we have a strong electrolyte with a weak electrolyte. Now strong electrolyte means that whatever we have dissociates completely and the weak electrolyte is in some sort of equilibrium. Okay, so we have three examples here, and we're going to calculate the pH of all three. First one, we have some potassium propionate and propionic acid. Uh, this is the conjugate base, but it's just a, a very strong electrolyte, and the situation is going to be the same with all three. Now, to solve these sort of things with a weak electrolyte, you've got to have the Ka or the Kb, and we have the Ka's and Kb's for the different situations for A, B, and C. This is something that you would either look up or it would be given to you in the problem. So for the first one we're giving potassium propionate and propionic acid. And first off we need to recopy over our Ka for our propionic acid. And the Ka is 1.3 times 10 to the minus we're going to need that. Okay. Now we're going to use the ICE method, which is initial change in equilibrium concentrations. So we'll go ahead and copy this information down here. So we got C2H5COOH. That is our propionic acid. That's what's going to be dissociating. And we want to know what the concentration of the H plus is going to be. So we can do pH because it is an acid. And here is the conjugate base, which is the common ion between the two, which is the, the C2H5COO minus, and that's the common ion between the two. And so initial concentration, we always get that from the problem itself. So the initial concentration of the acid is this right here. It's 0.085 molar in propionic acid. So we go 0.08 there is no initial concentration of the H plus and initial concentration of the conjugate base which is the propionate ion which is right here is the 0.060 molar so our change since we're in equilibrium with the acid it's going to be we're going to lose some of the acid we're going to gain some H plus and we're going to gain some of the propionate ion and so it'll be some quantity less, some quantity more, and some quantity more. And the final is going to be this minus that. Zero plus that is still x and 0 0.060 plus x. Now we need to go ahead and plug this into our equilibrium expression for Ka, but we can make some assumptions to make our lives easier. If we don't make some assumptions, we're going to end up using the quadratic equation. But we notice that Ka is very small. 10 to the minus fifth is small. And so we're going to assume that we can ignore the x's over here with respect to the concentrations here. We're going to say that x is very small. And so we're going to ignore that one and ignore that one. So we can plug this into our equilibrium expression. And so our equilibrium expression is the Ka, which is 1.3 times 10 to the minus fifth, is equal to the concentrations of the products over the reactants. And so the products is the H plus, which is an X. We've ignored that. So it's X times 0 0.060 molar divided by our initial concentration of acid. And we ignore that X and so that's 0 0.085 and finally we can solve for x and so x is going to be we're going to bring this up and bring this under so it's 1.3 times 10 to the minus fifth times 0 0.085 divided by the 0 0.06 we're going to bring that under And that gives us uh, 1.84 times 10 
to the minus fifth, and that's the concentration of our H plus. Now we want the pH, and the pH, if you recall, is minus the log of the H plus concentration, and so we'll just plug it on in there, and that's minus the log of this concentration right here, times 10 to the minus fifth, and we plug that in our calculator, and we get 4.73 for our pH. Next up we have a problem that is very similar to the last one except this time we have a base and it's conjugate acid which happens to be a very strong electrolyte and the base which is triethylamine is a weak acid and it has a KB copying it back off from the original slide fifth okay and once again we'll use our ICE method which is initial change in equilibrium and we'll go ahead and con copy down what we have which is the triethylamine concentration this time it's the OH minus concentration that we're going to be looking for and we'll use that to calculate our pH and we need the conjugate acid and the common and the common ion is the CH3 3 it's the uh, triammonium ion, which is what we're after as the common ion. And once again, we'll do initial, our change, and our equilibrium. Our initial is given by what we have in the original part of the problem. That's 0.075 molar and triethylamine. And OH minus, well, there's no way OH minus concentration uh, to begin with. And then we have our common ion, which is given by our strong electrolyte, which dissociated completely, and that's the triethylamine chloride, and that's 0 0.10 molar. This triethyl triethylamine is going to dissociate to form OH minus and the common ion, so it's going to decrease by some amount, X and therefore the OH concentration is going to increase by some amount X. There's only one OH which is going to be formed by the way which is why we have just one X and once again our common ion is going to increase by X and our equilibrium is going to be our initial with our change and so that's 0 0.75 minus X this is plus X and this is 0 0.10 plus X now we're going to make an assumption that since this KB is very small and these are relatively large numbers that we can safely ignore our X and we're going to say that is the equilibrium concentration is going to be 0 0.075 and the equilibrium concentration over here is going to be 0.1 and that's going to simplify our calculation somewhat and so we write out our KB expression which is KB is equal to our products remember we're ignoring that X so that's times 0 0.10 over our reactant and we're ignoring the X here and if we go ahead and solve for X uh, this will give us 6.4 times 10 to the minus fifth we'll bring this up and bring this under And that'll equal our OH concentration, and we get uh, 4.8 times 10 to the minus fifth, and that's our OH concentration. Now remember, we're looking for the pH. We don't want the OH concentration, we want the pH. But recall that the pH is equal to 14 minus the pOH, and the pOH is equal to minus the log of the OH minus concentration. So we can substitute in here and we get 14 minus the minus log of 4.8 times 10 to the minus fifth, which was our concentration of OH minus. And we'll go ahead and plug that in our calculator and you could do these as two separate steps and then subtract it from 14. 
you get 9.68 for our pH. Finally, we have a problem that is a little bit more con uh, complex than the previous ones, but not terribly so. Once again, we have a weak acid with a strong electrolyte, and we need the, we're going to need the Ka for that weak acid, and Ka for acetic acid from our original slide is 1.8 times 10 to the minus fifth. Now, we're not given the initial concentrations of the mixture, we're just given the residual concentrations before we actually mix them together. So we need to calculate that out. So let's go ahead and find our millimoles of acetic acid or millimoles of sodium acetate, and then we'll figure out what that is in a total of 50 milliliters of solution. So we've got 50 milliliters of the acetic acid, and it's times 0.15 molar, and that gives us 7.5 millimolar in the acetic acid. And for the acetate, we have 50 milliliters once again, and that's times 0 0.20 molar in the acetate, and that gives us 10.0 millimolar in the acetate. Okay, now they're millimolar because it's milliliters times moles per liter. The liters cancel and you're left with milli times the moles, millimoles. Millimoles acetic, millimoles acetate. Now finally, the total volume is 100 milliliters and we need to know the molarity for each. So for the acetic acid, it's 7.5 millimoles per 100 milliliters and that gives us 0 0.075 molarity in acetic and for the acetate it is 10.0 millimoles per 100 milliliters and of course millis cancel, millis cancel and we're left with moles per liter and that gives us 0 0.10 molar in the acetate ion. Finally we can use use our ice chart and we'll start with the acetic acid the H plus concentration because we're going to need that for our pH and also well the acetic acid decomposes to H plus plus the acetate ion which is the conjugate base and our initial our change and our equilibrium Our initial is given by our initial concentration, which we calculated as 0.075 molar. H plus is zero. The acetate is given by what we initially calculated, which was 0.01 molar in acetate. Our change, well, our acetic acid is in equilibrium with the H plus and acetate, and acetic acid is, gonna, is going to dissociate into H plus and acetate, so it's going to change by a minus X quantity, and therefore the H plus is going to increase by plus X quantity, and the acetate is going to increase by plus, eight, plus X quantity, and the equilibrium is going to be 0 0.075 minus X, X, and X. Now, we're going to make an assumption. This 10 to the minus 5 is pretty small compared to 0 0.075, so we're going to assume that we can safely ignore that X and we can safely ignore this x as well. And so our equilibrium expression is going to look like this. It's going to be the Ka is equal to the products, which is the H plus concentration and the acetate concentration, which is now is x times 0.10 divided by our reactant, which was the acetic acid, which is initial concentration minus x, and we ignore the x since we're assuming X is very small, and it will be, and we have the Ka is equal to this expression. We need to solve for X, so what we're going to do is bring this 0 0.075 up and bring the 0 0.10 underneath, so that X is equal to 1.8 times 10 to the minus fifth. We're going to bring that up, 0 0.075, and we're going to bring this down, 0 0.10, and we get X is... 1.35 times 10 to the minus fifth, and that's equal to the H plus concentration of this final equilibrium, 
and recall that the pH is the minus the log of that. So pH is equal to minus the log of the H plus concentration. We plug that in our calculator and we get 4.87 as being the final pH.